Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at the newest release of 4M Linux, an independent Linux distribution that is very interesting. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. First thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to 4M Linux's website. When you get to their site, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of fancy stuff everywhere. You've got news. It lets you know that this is the newest release. It was released on November 30th. It's 4M Linux 38 stable. Then you come over to the right. Let's check out the about section. And it lets you know 4M Linux is a small, independent, general purpose Linux distribution with a strong focus on the following four M's of computing. Maintenance, multimedia, mini server, and mystery. Maintenance, you can use it as a system rescue live CD. Multimedia, full support for a huge number of image, audio, and video formats. Then, of course, your servers. And then mystery, meaning a collection of classic Linux games. And then if you go over to the help, it just basically states, I've started to write 4M Linux tutorials at the 4M Linux blog. You can get help with the stable, help with the beta, frequently asked questions. You can look at the license. And then, of course, if you should have any questions, get those answered right here. Just by going down here, clicking on that, sending them an email. And then, of course, over here, you've got download. And when their download page opens up, it says make a donation with PayPal. After the payment, you will be redirected to the download page. Or alternatively, you can download for free from www.sf.net, which is SourceForge. I will include the download link in the description below so you don't have to do that. But let me do say this. If you download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, give it a test drive and you like it and you want to support the project, come on over here and throw them a couple bucks if you want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this. So you can see that once you boot from a USB or into a virtual machine, this is the desktop you're going to be met with. It's rather beautiful, actually. You've got a dock up top. You've got your conky over here on your right. You've got a nice wallpaper. If you right click on the home screen, you don't get anything. Now, if you don't like the big icon you have over here, all you got to do is go here where it says iDesk on or off and you can click on it. So what I'm going to do is click on it. And as you can see, it changed everything up. You've got your trash bin downloads, video, CD-ROM. You've got that all over there. So you can set that up the way you like. That's truly up to you. Down on the bottom, you've got a single panel. You've got date and time. You kind of got a little system monitor here. You've got internet, battery, and sound. And then over to the left, you have your desktop one, desktop two, which you can switch between if you want to. Then you've got USB, and then you've got your application launcher right there. And then over here on the right, you've got your conky. Basically states your uptime. RAM usage, right now it's saying we're using 1.62 gigabytes. Of the two gigabytes I have issued to this machine, I'm going to take a look at that in a second because that's kind of heavy. I don't know why it's doing that unless it's completely running in RAM at the present, which when it did load up, I do believe it loaded the complete operating system in RAM, but we'll look at that here in a moment. And then down on the bottom, it shows you XORG, Pulse Audio, Conky. It shows you a couple of the things running in your system right there. And then if you come up top, we've got terminal. Let's go ahead and open the terminal. Let's see if they have HTOP. And they do have HTOP. Over here, it's letting you know that the RAM usage is 1.62 gigabytes of the 1.93. So that's telling you that the operating system is currently running in RAM. But if you come over here to HTOP, it gives you an accurate number of what the operating system itself is using. Memory, it's using 211 megabytes of the two gigabytes I have issued to this machine. So this is lightweight, guys. This is definitely something if you have an older system and you truly want that system to just fly, this is definitely something to take a look at because that is very, very impressive. Out of two gigabytes, it's using right at 200 megabytes. So take a look at that if you do give it a test drive. Let's go ahead and close that. Come back up top. You've got a text editor, calculator. You've got your calendar. You've got a web browser. Now, is that the same one we were just in? Let's take a look. I don't want to set that as my default. This is Pale Moon web browser. So you actually have two web browsers installed out of the box. Let's go over here. You've got NetSurf. 
which is lightweight and quick. And then you have Pale Moon. And if you go to the start page of Pale Moon, you will notice that you've got Pale Moon Home, add-ons, forum, announcements. And then, of course, down here, you've got quick links to resources, quick links to your socials, quick links to your shopping, email, media, and travel. Now, you can become a pro, faster loading, no ads, more features. You can pay Pale Moon $20 a year. I don't recommend it, but if you like Pale Moon and you want to support them, by all means, go knock yourself out. Let's go ahead and close out of Pale Moon. Then you come back up top, you've got your mail client. Let's take a peek at that, which is Silfeed 3.7.0. You would just come in here and you could create a mailbox default location. And then all you'd have to do is add your accounts. If it's a POP3 account, IMAP4 account, POP3 Gmail, or IMAP4 Gmail. You just come in here, select it. Let's, let's go there and forward. Then you display name and put in your email address. Then it would ask you for your password, and then it would start bringing everything into your mail client. So let's go ahead and close out of that. You've got an audio player, video player, screen shooter, screen recorder, webcam stream, and then, of course, turning your conky off or on. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Now, let's come back down. Let's go to the applications. You've got Bash, TCLSH, Internet. You've got NetSurf, SilFeed, Transmission for your BitTorrents. You can turn Tor on or off. So let's click on that. Tor is now running. So that was it. You just clicked on it. Tor is running. You're good to go. You'll be able to surf anonymously, or you can come back up, go to internet, and turn Tor off. Tor has been stopped. Office, you've got Abbey Word, Laz Paint, Calculator, Calendar, Sticky Notes, Maintenance. Under Data, you've got Backup, Recovery, Wiping, Files. You've got PC Man File Manager. Let's take a look at that. There's your file manager. It's really lightweight, stays out of your way, lets you get things done. Has a real, the operating system has a real uh, Windows XP type feel to it. So if you're somebody that's at home with older desktop environments and you still like that XP type feel, it's definitely something to take a look at. You've got your usual suspects over here and your standard home folders right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close back out of that. Back over to maintenance, you've got CD and DVD, partitions, monitoring, miscellaneous tools, GNU Grub, UNet Bootin. Multimedia, Let's Play, you've got Celluloid, Minitube, Let's Rip, you've got Asunder, Let's Mix, Alsa Mixer, Let's Edit, Audacity, Sound Studio, Devices, Webcam, GTK Cam, Mini Server, Start All, Stop All, Settings, you've got your firewall right there, Tests, you've got a lot to do on FTP, HTTP, SSH, Telnet, good lord, Mystery, Console Games, you've got Pac-Man, Snake, X Toys, X Games, Asteroids, Froggers, Space Invaders. It's got quite a few older looking games on it. Emulators, you've got DOS Box. I guess we could try one. Let's go ahead and try Mario. I guess you just click start. No save. One player. I don't know how to make him jump. So that works. I guess I'd have to look up the controls. So you've got games on here. You'd have to look up the controls, but that's pretty neat. That's out of the box. Okay, there's controls. There's your mushroom, and he gets bigger. So there's no sound. You would probably just have to play around with it a little bit, but there are games installed on it out of the box, if that's something you're into. Extensions, Office extensions. you got LibreOffice, GIMP, Inkscape, Vim, GVim, plugins. Okay, so you've got Chromium, Vivaldi, Pale Moon, Qubit Torrent, Dropbox, FileZilla. Now, my question is, that'll install and download Chromium. So the shortcuts are there. If you actually click on it, it'll ask you if you want to install it. And then you'd come over here, click yes, and it would install it to your system. So that's a different way to get applications right there. Let's go back over. Where was that under extensions? And then system apps, game pack, another game pack, extreme tux racer, GNU jump, wine, Java, electron, and then 4M Linux's website settings. I want to know, let's see, default apps, desktop. I'm trying to find out how you install applications. Okay. After some quick searching, Pretty much what's installed on here is what you get. And if you want to install something, let's say Minitube. Oh, Minitube's already installed. Like a while ago when we were looking at opening Chromium, let's see if GIMP's installed. Okay, you click on GIMP. This will download and install the program. You click yes and it would install. So there's not a software center or there's not like a synaptic package manager to install other things to this OS. So you're pretty limited there, guys. But what's on here and what you can add 
is quite a few applications that will definitely be useful. If not having a bunch of applications on your system is a plus for you, this is definitely something to take a look at. And then down here, you've got power off, reboot, lock screen, reload, and exit. I really like this operating system, guys. Yeah, it's not perfect. You don't have a big software center where you can download a lot of junk. But let me let me frame it in this way for you. Let's say you have an older laptop or you have an older desktop that you haven't really been able to use or been able to utilize. Download this, throw it on a USB, throw it on that system, and you've got a functioning computer. You can surf the web, do emails, you can download games, you can download GIMP. I mean, you can pretty much get everything you need for a base system Get it installed and downloaded and running in a light environment. I mean, that is just ridiculous that you're looking at using. Now we're at 193 megs. That is pretty much what I'm thinking here. If you've got an older system and you want to bring that thing back to life or you need a rescue USB, this is definitely the operating system to look at. It's independent. It's not relying on a Debian or an Arch or a Fedora. It's light. It lets you get in, lets you get work done. It makes things really easy, actually. It's kind of a little self-contained operating system that lets you add a few things, but not a whole lot. Tell me what you think. Is 4M Linux something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, and give a test drive to? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.